What's going on? So you went out and you bought the new iPhone 16, 16 Pro or 16 Pro Max and you use Google Fi and you've come to realize that the Google Fi app says the last supported iPhone is the iPhone 14. Well, I got an iPhone 16 Pro Max here and I'm gonna walk you through the process of getting your iPhone 16, 16 Pro or 16 Pro Max to work with Google Fi. The first thing you'll need is you'll need a new phone. You'll need your old phone that you're currently using and you'll need a laptop with internet connection. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is on your existing phone, go to settings, and then we're gonna to go to general. And then at the bottom, you see transfer or reset phone. Now you click get started, and this will help you create a backup of your existing phone for your new phone. You click continue. It lets you know what you're gonna backup. You can click done. And then if you go back to windows, towards the top, it has a percentage to let you know how much of your existing phone has been backed up on iCloud. Now, if you don't use iCloud or don't know what it is, or you don't have enough storage, not to worry. Apple will actually give you additional storage, back up all of your phone onto the iCloud. And then when you go on your new phone, you can choose to restore that backup onto your new phone. Once this is complete, we can move on. All right, the next step is to take your new phone and turn it on. And we'll walk through the setup process. Now you're gonna log in with your Apple ID for your phone, which is the password you use for the App Store when you download apps, and then the email address associated with your Apple account. All right, once you're logged in, your existing phone will get a pop-up saying, do you wanna allow access for this new phone? It'll give you a six digit number that you need to take from your existing phone and put into your pop-up of your new phone, and then you get the terms and conditions of Apple. Once you've accepted these, it'll sign you into your Apple account, and we'll move forward. All right, so once you've logged into your Apple account, you'll get a screen here that says set up cellular. You get to choose either between transfer by, from a nearby phone or use a QR code. In this case, with Google Fi, you'll wanna use, use a QR code. So when you select use a QR code, it will actually load your camera and you can scan a QR code and it begins the process of setting it up. So at this point, we need to jump over to the computer to get to the next step. All right, so once you're on your computer, you're gonna go over to the website fi.google dot com slash ios slash quick setup and you're going to log in with your google fi account so this you'll need your email address for your google fi account and your password all right once you scan the qr code you'll get a message that says activate eSIM. you select continue and there are a few more steps so bear with me we got to get this completely set up okay so you'll see cellular setup complete but it is not complete yet you'll also notice that on the computer that the website changed with some additional information so you select continue if you have any Apple Pay or transit card set up in your existing phone, uh, you'll need to put in the last three digits of the CCV numbers of those cards in order to restore Apple Pay before we move to the next step. All right, so we're not complete yet. We're almost there. Um, if you did restore a backup, you may have your Google Fi app on your existing, your new phone. You need to delete that app and you need to restart that process. If you didn't restore a backup and you have a brand new phone, you need to go to the App Store and download the Google Fi app once you've logged into your Google Fi app, it's a good point to take your existing phone, your old phone, and put it into airplane mode because you don't want two activated phones at the same time. And then you'll see here, it says activate plan. So you select activate plan. And then the last step in the app is to finish setting up. So let's hit continue. It's gonna say to put into the cellular data network, the H2G2 settings. Now on your new phone, make sure your messaging works correctly. You open up settings. You go to cellular and then cellular data network. If there are fields here, you need to delete them and replace them. So for cellular data, the APN should be H2G2 and it is case sensitive. So lowercase h2, lowercase g2. For LTE setup, you need the APN to be H2G2. For MMS, you need the APN to be H2G2. Additionally, in MMS, there is a field MMSC. You need to delete that URL and replace it with HTTP colon backslash backslash M dot Phi dot Goog backslash MMS backslash WAP ENC. And additionally, in this box, you need to replace the MMS max message size with 2345678989. Lastly, in this 
box, you need to replace the personal hotspot, APN, with H2G2 minus T. Once you've done this, we can move on. Moving back over to the Google Fi app. So you say, yes, it's set up. You can turn on voicemails and your contacts. And now your phone number set up is asking you to restart your phone and we'll be right back. And while the uh, new phone is resetting, if you found this video useful and you wanna throw me a few dollars, I'm gonna throw up my Venmo. Feel free to scan it, throw me a few dollars. And um, we're almost done with this setup. All right, so the last thing you wanna do is you wanna actually text message somebody with an iPhone, a text, a photo, and then find somebody who has an Android and also send them a text and a photo to make sure your messaging is set up and then make a phone call to somebody. And if your phone calls work, your text messages work to other Apple devices and your text messages work to Android, then your phone is set up. Once again, my name's Adam Timmerberg. I hope you have a great day. Thank you. And I tried to keep this video as quick as possible because time is money and I like money.